Hey everybody, it's uh, Lou Paints and I'm the miniature painting coach and uh, we, I've got a lot of things I want to share. Uh, first off, before we're going to start painting, I'm actually really happy uh, because in my endeavors of improving myself as a miniature painter, uh, I'm after all the first person I coach <laughs> you know, to get better at painting. Um, I managed to get help from David Cobol and he taught me how to improve my uh, photography and he taught me like with what materials I could go and search in order to get my photography up. And so uh, I discovered this thing called um, Miniature Tutor uh, through him and I went <laughs> over on the uh, website and uh, did this whole uh, lesson about uh, miniature photography which is about six hours long. I'm right now halfway through and I'm already getting my own results. <laughs> it's, just, it's really important to learn from other people. Now, um, we're gonna be uh, continuing painting this and I've gotten criticism for it. I can't say who it is yet, um, but I'm actually pretty happy because I'm a fan of his work. <laughs> now, uh, we're gonna uh, go through doing this and we're gonna go get to painting. And if you're new to uh, the videos that I do, uh, we have the list of brushes and paints down here. We have my reference down here. Uh, we have the uh, color uh, spectrum, or rather the chroma. So I should be using the right words from now on. That is up here will be the chroma, the color chroma for you to refer to. And then uh, over here will be the main uh, camera. And uh, we're painting a Petronian sorcerer today, like how we do usually. Uh, if you liked the video, or if you felt like you learned something, can like and subscribe. Now these, I just want to make sure I get this clear. This is my own personal improvement vlog. It is not a miniature painting tutorial. It is not me coaching you how to paint miniatures. Because it's not coaching, literally. Coaching would be me and you kind of interacting one on one. It's different. Um, well, anyways, um, I have to get it out because I think some people were uh, commenting or like DMing me on Facebook, and, like getting confused about like what 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 am I actually doing? Like how are these videos actually me coaching? They are not. They are, they are not. Okay, so uh, all that out of the way, I'm really sorry for kind of like uh, going over through that for those of you who just want to see me painting real quick. So. Um, now, where are we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the last time, uh, we cut out darks and we make sure to get over that base. And so uh, one of the things that I need to work on is the um, refining now the details outwards in order to create a smoother effect over on the miniature. Now, you see, I've mostly done that onto the face, but it's still uh, pretty rough in my opinion. I mean, yeah, sure, it's a miniature that's the size of my thumb, but I have technology. I have the ability of the smartphone right here to kind of behave as my viewfinder or rather a, a view where I can zoom in like this and I can zoom in like really close and I can kind of if the camera would just stop shaking, or my hand would stop shaking, we can see that there's some flaws under the miniature. It's rough, it's not smooth, and there's a lot of things that I don't like about how the miniature is right now. And I mean, like, I guess some of you would say like, but who cares, you know, because it's a miniature and most of us are gonna look up here. Well, and it might not even need to be all that display painted. After all, I'm not, I don't remember how many hours I into this miniature but it's definitely not hit anywhere near the 10 hour mark yet. I think it's only something like it's five or six hours of me just kind of like experimenting and fooling around um, and just kind of finding my way. Uh, so even though I have an image in my mind that's clear, like most of the steps up until now has been me using methods that I'm not comfortable with, with colors that I'm not too comfortable with, right? So. That's the goal in improving myself. Now, let's take a look at my palette real quick so you guys have, uh, who need a heads up in figuring out what uh, uh, I've done. So this is the colors. This is a, um, a primary cyan um, from Golden. This is a teal from Golden. These are liquid paints. This is a yellow from Golden. Um, this is a, a prim, primrose yellow, so to be specific, from Golden. And this is from a heavy body acrylic. This is skin color from um, 
Hill Terracotta from Winston New Newton and most of the paints are down there but I just want to make sure everybody's just kind of in line of what's going on here and we have uh, white paint this is uh, dead white from Vallejo um, this is a turquoise from um, uh, Golden magenta from Golden a Quinacridri Quidrone Quinacridone <laughs> magenta and this is an ivory black by uh, uh, Dela and Rowney and then this is a uh, what 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 is this again? Oh yeah 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 that's the uh, the uh, brown what brown is this again? This is an antelope brown and a purple uh, lake from FW Inks, and so I had to just like refer the the, the inks that's just right on my desk because I, I I completely forgot because uh, uh, it's been a while since I painted because I had a lot to do um, with the uh, well I mean life. And Corona, and well, my everything else that I have to do in life. So I I got to this painting session now, and I'm just really happy, and uh, I just want to share that with you guys. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and continue painting this thing. And so we're gonna be using the um, uh, the Sable Round uh, Georgian uh, Georgian De La Rowney brush, and I've had this brush for quite a while, so. Uh, we're gonna bring her in and see what we need to refine now most of the uh, things over here can be kind of like uh, glazed over in the color to make sure that the uh, bits and pieces are smoother and we can just kind of go at them really roughly we don't need to be all that smooth because uh, my uh, painting technique thus far has been a lot less on the tedious side and more so uh, on the uh, kind of fluid watercolor uh, or uh, oils kind of way of handling things I usually like to do wet on wet with acrylics when I'm painting uh, not on miniature so I tend to carry that over so um, we're gonna be focusing on let me see uh, this part of the sleeve first so um, that's what we'll be focusing for in this episode and so that sleeve is going to be made out from a magenta over here and uh, yeah, so we're gonna load our brush with that magenta first and we're gonna dump it in yellow and so it's gonna be something like this and then we're just kind of gonna plop it over here and we're gonna do a very very slight mix um, let's just kind of wash our brush take a bit more magenta and then plop it in here take a bit of uh, our medium and then plop it in here and we can see that it's coming more towards the um, the thinness that we want so we're just gonna take, continue taking our medium and then add it to here to create more paint do, 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 do. and now we have something that's about the paint that we want now so why have I start mixing it on the wet palette when this entire time I've been kind of like wet blending well for me when I want to get something that's of more of a smoother uh, touch over a whole bunch of colors that's already been expressly uh, put down on the palette uh, on, on the model um, I do want to kind of go at it at a really soft really thinned out way of just like a uni more uniform color that I can use on the overall of the miniature so let me just kind of demonstrate this way let's just remove this and then uh, let's just kind of zoom it in and okay so we're gonna go at it uh, in this way we go at it really softly and we're gonna cover that over right and now you notice that uh, essentially I've kind of glazed this over like this and we're just gonna continue to do so and we're unifying the colors right now which is important we're unifying where it needs to be unified so we just kind of go at it really slowly because this yellow is gonna only really cover on this part because of how the light works so we want to make sure to get all the uh, the messy portions uh, out of the way and we're gonna allow that color that's nice on the uh, that we've already laid out to um, to kind of unify the whole thing and create this nice little uh, effect that we have so we're gonna keep going it really softly and do -do 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 -do. okay so we're gonna go at it through her uh, color over here and now I'm have decided that I want to do some kind of a freehand on the color over here something simple just to 
um, frame her uh, her chest and her head um, so the viewer will be centered to that in composition framing using the sword and her staff. Now you notice the staff I haven't done any of that at all is because I'm just going to leave that for last um, because right now most of the weight on this miniature is on the body itself and on the head. So uh, as far as doing any non-metallic metal or anything like that goes, we uh, or any sorry true metallic metal, we're gonna leave it until we're way further towards the end. So we're gonna take some skin tone here, and we're gonna mix that with our medium, and then we're going to uh, just so you guys actually can see what I've uh, been doing. My palette, sorry, still practicing doing this. So you can see our, uh, I put some skin tone right here from the pale terracotta. I just kind of slopped it in like this to kind of get that um, nice little blend that we have. And we're only going to do it for uh, what's necessary. So let's just go ahead and uh, plop this here really carefully. Plop, plop, plop. Right? Plop, plop, plop. With it really softly. So I'm just kind of defining where the lights are. Taking it slow, kind of going at it like this, and then I'll take some of my uh, medium uh, and just plop it like this, and then I'll guide the the paints that I've kind of put on both, so that it will kind of bind the colors through. And we notice that there's already a soft change in the teal, and it's. It's just nice. I mean, like it's it's just because why why is the change happen so fast? Because well, I mean, both any white grays or yellows are really opaque, and what that means is that um, they tend to be a lot more uh, when you put them onto any other color, they tend to just pirate, They tend to just take over whatever color that's underneath, and what that what that means is that. If you even if you put like a green or blue uh, underneath a skin color, and you put um, a skin color or white or yellow on top, it tends to if you haven't tinned it enough, it, re it requires quite a lot of tinning. There's some cat fur there. Um, it will just stick over the colors at the bottom, and you might not even see them. So with these colors, you tend to need to be extremely careful and extremely tinned out. So the um, it doesn't take over the colors you want to need like so for example on this face I have it on a kind of like slight purple color if you notice or a magenta and then there's a little bit of pink and a little bit of blue so those colors I need to be extremely careful when I put the skin tone uh, that pale terracotta on top otherwise it would just remove all the yellow uh, or all the green that I've kind of put on the face at the beginning of um, her base coat so I need to be really cautious of things like that and maybe i think most people might not notice that small color gradation and perhaps it's also because of me using a smartphone to kind of record all this however um right now i believe it's not the time yet for me to really go deep into stuff like that um because again this is a tabletop miniature and we just i'm using this as a form of practice um, and I do have some videos halfway through, so um, if you guys actually wanted to see the process, um, you guys can go check out those videos, uh, or wait for me till I upload the uh, work in progress videos, which uh, I do have some here and there. So, um, and I can always go back and take screenshots. I should really remind myself to do that. I just need to forget doing that. So I'm right now. I'm just kind of building up that um, that color slowly. And I'm going to put on some pink really softly over here just to get that red kind of moving into that yellowy parts a bit better. That's a lot, bit, maybe a bit too much. Let's spread it out. Like that. Spread it down like so. And then we're going to take the bits and pieces that's like this that skin and that yellow and kind of continue going upwards like this so we can get a much more smoother finish because right now I mean like we've already gone and expressed ourselves so much or at least I have
<laughs> yeah. So now I kind of want to unify everything so that it kind of goes uh, smooth. And this is probably um, where I think it's the, for me, the less, it, it's a lot less thought need to put uh, in uh, in talking about what I'm doing in the video because it's just small little color changes. And I'm just basically dabbing a little bit of paint, trying to fill out how much it needs to be tinned and placed on the miniature and just kind of like scrubbing it uh, over the um, the surface. So here we go. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Really softly. And we want to make sure that the lighting still makes sense. So we just look at it up like this. And we can see that now here maybe it's a little bit too bright. So we will add that um, ink and just kind of uh, the ink of that kind of brown which we should mix earlier and just kind of go at it really softly like this so that's a nice transition so it goes smoother softer and softer and softer now um, this form of uh, well I mean wet blending for me I, I really adore it because uh, when I used to do digital painting on the computer I never really uh, enjoyed the fact that computer has this strong limit in that you don't get to work on like traditional mediums, anything to do with wet on wet. So pretty much all you're doing on the computer is that you're glazing, you're doing something similar to glazing and that you're layering in tiny little bits to make judgments. And what's becoming more popular is that um, because the digital painting industry has um, already improved like so much because of the internet and the nature of uh, doing things digitally that everybody has kind of figured out what are the specific color uh, hues the uh, the hex codes if, if, if uh, they the number it's uh, associated on a computer so like it, it's a trend right now that most digital artists have they already know which colors they're going to combine and so they plop it onto the shape uh, kind of like what I did at the beginning and they just kind of like create that shape immediately in the uh, at the beginning and so they don't have to do a lot of the work um, and they only need to blend the small little gradients in between and I really like the way uh, that's done for a digital medium because you get a really uh, if you've ever seen any game art or uh, League of Legends specifically like the bright uh, hues that uh, show up on that Right, um, they tend to be very vibrant, and they tend to be very, very. Uh, you you have all these crazy colors now from primaries, right? Blue, cyan, magenta. You have stuff that's like pink, and then like purple, and they all make sense with one another with like greens and like yellows, which is tough. Like it's uh, I think in the so far as in the traditional, uh, painting in terms of traditional painting it's behind in the sense that uh, people are kind of like kind of like stagnant in the uh, aesthetic like is the aesthetic has not evolved I'm not talking about like people's skill or stuff like that and maybe perhaps uh, with miniature painting people uh, are more comfortable with things like that and I don't know if yeah, it will change anytime soon but I think with digital a painting because you have in everybody from painting trying to emulate classical painting to people that paint like anime right uh, so it's it's crazy how much is being discovered in the uh, digital painting scene that I don't feel is uh, it's it's not like those things are not carrying over to traditional and I feel that's like so sad because uh, there's new techniques that all these uh, young new artists are figuring out that can be applied to miniature painting in theory because um, most of the colors and everything uh, are achievable. And what I mean by in theory is because technically we're all using the same art theory uh, whether or not it's painting miniatures or not if you're painting it as a sculpture because we are painting a sculpture and so if something like digital painting can carry over to let's say 3D modeling uh, painting and then carries over the canvases which is has been currently because of concept artists um, 
then uh, especially with watercolors in the right now <laughs> the watercolor scene is like you have all these young new people doing watercolors and they do these insane effects uh, because in especially with gouache and so what's what's stopping the miniature painting scene from moving forward really i don't i don't know but it's just kind of like me meandering and just kind of talking about like what other scenes are doing and how that's like not get being carried over to miniature painting yet perhaps it's because miniature painting is such a strong uh, structured niche like um it's actually pretty hard to introduce anything new um quickly i i find when when i watch uh, people um talk about on videos in the miniature painting community because like let's say i think uh it was that jeremy table the guy who wrote um uh, I might be screwing his name. I'm so sorry if I did, because I'm a big fan of Jeremy, uh, who who wrote, um, Figopedia, and I discovered him thanks to uh, Trent Denison and uh, Vincent and of course uh, David Cowell, who's been helping me out a lot recently, um, in trying to identify, uh, how to make better lights and shadows in miniature painting. Because uh, even though I understand it from a um, from an art background, go, translating that information over to miniature painting has been a little bit weird because a painting is something so small, and so there's its own obstacles. But anyway, so it, what Jeremy said, uh, Jeremy said in, inside his book Wikipedia is that it was extremely difficult to introduce vibrant uh, object source lighting uh, in miniature painting the first time when I think the guys at Rackham uh, Studios and Reaper Studios were trying to. Get, uh, get out into the market or industry that's because people were already kind of fixated to the muted tones that uh, world war uh, or historian miniature uh, painting miniatures uh, has already kind of had that grasp of how people believe that miniature painting should be painted and that's tough like you, you, it's when, when, when you can't uh, introduce a new art technique to a community like it's just it just sucks like like it's just just a you're lacking a form of creative expression and you're pushing out people who otherwise would be able to add something to the scene and to me like it goes for everybody like it's, it really sucks for everybody it sucks for the people coming from sfx it's coming from people who are coming from the fine arts it's coming it sucks for people who are coming from digital painting that um, because most uh, miniature painters right now are still prevalently people who are above the um, the demograph I believe is uh, like 30 and above so you don't get a lot of youngsters who paint miniatures because it's just tough to get into and although that is changing I'm just kind of taking my teal or teal now uh, and just gonna blend it over here really softly really really softly so we're gonna move that I'm gonna take some paints, but yeah, if you if you, it's like, you, I mean, it, it's one thing that miniatures getting into miniatures itself is already so expensive, unlike let's say digital painting, but it's another thing where like it's the community might not be accepting of new ideas, so you don't get that communication with the, uh, the the young people, especially because it's just a matter of. Um, clashing in worldviews and zeitgeist because of the generation gap sometimes and how you want to conduct uh, the painting and it, it's I mean it's just it's I mean it's sad like it's uh you have art now we have the internet and we have so many things that we could kind of put together but we're not kind of putting them together yet because of what people kind of like perceive should be done in the right way right and it's art it's like you i mean what 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 is the right way <laughs> it's like you have like people painting to for completionists to kind of get armies done quickly and you have people who paint because you know they kind of want to make this fantastic looking miniatures for box art i think that there's room for everybody it's just that we kind of need to expand our community a little bit more um so, you know, uh, hopefully if you're listening to me say all this and you want to, uh, you know, pop pop me a DM or uh, in, in the comment section to talk about you know, these kind of little things, um, it, you know, that'd be great. 
um if if you disagree like oh, it's fine like tell me how is it that you disagree it will teach me something okay so uh you can see that we're kind of going over it really softly now so that we kind of get those um those colors kind of like united and we can see that there's already a problem here so this part the yellow is still a bit it's way too bright so we're just kind of going to tone it down like this and we're going to actually add a little bit of skin tone to mute it really softly right like that because there's going to be a gleam of highlight anyways on this part because it's a miniature we kind of need to add a little bit more dense that's fine so now we're going to um, and I'm painting through the camera so I'm literally looking at this screen through my phone while I'm painting this which is uh, hopefully you guys appreciate so let's let's just kind of manual focus this thing because we need to be more sharp there we go now I can really see what I'm doing okay we're gonna go at it real slow like this before it dries you can see that paint is already drying up Man, it's humid today I didn't realize that before so we're gonna unify we're gonna fix that problem and we're gonna unify it by taking a little bit of pink oh whoops because we're gonna bond that back into the uh, into her sleeve which is on the red magenta side so you're gonna do it real softly real softly okay and then we're going to add a just a little bit of magenta right a little bit of magenta and we're going to create a huge change whoops not just too much it's way too much so we're gonna add a magenta over on this side Really softly, do, 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 do. really softly, do, 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 do. Do, do, do. there we go, no harm done, you can put it uh, right over here, make this a bit more yellow, in the edge, cover that up, so we got that nice little gleam, and I do like that gleam, it kind of speaks to me a little bit, okay, so, Let's see what we have done. Hmm. So we only have like about I don't know, three minutes left for the video. For this episode, we're going to go at it really slowly over here. And we're going to take some skin color and we're going to add some uh, over here to really slim down that yellow. We're going to remove some medium. And we're gonna add a little bit more, a bit more, not too much, like so, softly and softly. Okay, so now we get that nice yellowish color, right? Let's just kind of redefine it a little bit more. Now, I need it to be opaque as well because when I put down a new color over here, the, the next time I uh, do that, I need to be hard enough of a white so that whatever color I put enough on the top it will kind of blend through well okay so we're gonna continue on over here we're gonna add a lot a bit more magenta over here kind of pop it on here we're gonna smooth that out oops don't need that much medium just have it a bit more on my okay there we go okay should get a bit there there we go continue on continue on and we're gonna put a little bit more magenta down here because we want to tint that uh, green a little bit so I should mention what tinting is. Tinting is when we shift a color to a, uh, well, I mean, uh, it's used in two different ways, right? So when you tint something is when you push it towards white. But um, in some other art fields, you do also use the word tinting to shift a, um, a paint towards, you shift a color towards another color in the hue or the chroma. Okay, so we do it softly. 
Okay, I'm, I'm actually liking it. Now there's more little things that we need to do to fix it. But it really depends on how smooth we want it to be. Now, I want to actually create a def definition of uh, going from smooth to expressive so that we can really get down the core of where we want the uh, eyes to look at. Right, for miniature. And uh, we've already hit the 30 minute mark, so just kind of like get an idea of what we're doing and then plan for the next uh, episode real quick. So we've already kind of smoothed out that sleeve and we should really smooth out the rest of the clothing and really get that, f um, that free hand done and clean her face. Like, what's up with the face? So maybe... Um, what I'll do first is I will concentrate around the upper torso the next session. Well, that being said, um, make sure that you learn from others to to be yourself more as a miniature painter. Alright, so take care, Tulu.